Hi, Carol here. A warm welcome to my craft. And while this is one different tutorial, I'm going to tell you what I want to do is take this Beautiful Faces book, take the binding off the side there, and put coils on so that I can practice inside. Now, I took this book to an appointment and this idea came to my head just a couple of days ago and I thought you know what I am going to do this and actually I think it's a crazy nice idea in theory because you get to draw over top of acetate and practice 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 and be able to wipe it clear you know those etch-a-sketch years ago well it's kinda like that you get to wash it off and start again. So what I did here, let me quickly interject, it is actually sheet protectors, acetate sheet protectors, really thick. And I'm putting them in between the pages. Now you can see I have already marked all of the chapters with those little uh, sticky uh, tabs that you buy. And I wrote on the side so I have easy access to every chapter and what it's about. I don't have to keep flicking through the book. <laughs> now, you will, I should have put the smiley faces at the end of the tutorial or in the middle because you'll, you'll get it later on. But let me just keep going here and show you what my intentions were. And it did end up to be a nice project at the end, but boy, the middle sandwich of it, it was a chore, let me tell you. And I left it in for you to see. I mean, not everything goes smoothly when somebody puts up a tutorial. That's why we edit. <laughs> That's the whole theory of editing. We get to take out all the crazy stuff and, you know, show you just, you know, what turns out well. Now, this project, I worked all day yesterday, all day, from morning to night, and all day today. Yes, 80. That's what I'm telling. I'm reminding myself here. These are 80 acetate protective sheets that I am going to cut down to fit the inside of this book. Now it's obviously 8 by 10. It's 8 inches across. Well yeah it's 8 inches when I cut it. Let me put it that way. I don't know why I had to take two rulers. <laughs> this is hysterical. I'm taking two rulers to measure it. Both of them have inches Carol. Yes. They both measure the same. I'm telling you, I'm editing right now after two days of trying to put this project together because I really think if you have any book that you want to practice coloring in and trace what is in the book because repetition is the key to learning. So if you have acetate sheets on there and you take any type of markers that are erasable, colored included, you have a wonderful journal book that you can practice to your heart's content. And then I added pages so you could actually, after you trace and trace and trace and trace, you can try your skill on Bristol cardstock. And I'm going to show you how that works in a minute. So what I need to do here is cut all the pages as close to this edge of the binding as possible. Yeah, that's why I'm bending it back here. But if you want, yeah, <laughs> keep it to the right hand side, Carol, because can you imagine if I had to cut over my arm? That would not be good, no. And so I left quite a bit out, but I'm going to tell you imagine this. I think there's 160 maybe pages in this. And I didn't want to, uh, I knew I had a lot of um, uh, physical dexterity to put into this, put it that way. So I didn't want to, there it is, there's the end of the binding. I really took it close to the edge. I seem to take all my crafts close to the edge, don't I? <laughs> Look at me here. Yes, gather it up. Yeah, here we go. Now, you have to be careful of the little edges, and if you do cut it, and you get a little nick in it, it's easy just to add a, you know, just to cut the corners and make it look like you did it on purpose. Uh, that's what I love about creating. So what I'm doing here for you to enjoy is going through the entire book. I did cut it out, but 
I had to see, you know, where I wanted to put everything. Now, here comes the bad boy right here. Yep, I'm getting up in my chair because I know there's a lot of cutting going to happen here. So you want to take your book and you want to measure across. Now, I did it across 8 inches plus 2 little ticks on this, which is tenths. If you decide to do this book, it measures, I measured it because I wanted to just take off a slight hair on this side. I didn't want to lose any words or any drawing. So uh, anyway, it was 8 inches and then over towards the 9, 2 ticks. So 2 tenths, 1 fifth, however you want to do it there. So every page, um, because this uh, beautiful cutting tool here, yes, I was really using manual labor here. Carol, you left a page there. Gather it up. Yep, there it is. Get it over there. And uh, I tried to get as many as I could without, uh, you know, breaking out into a sweat. <laughs> and sometimes I had to back off there because it was just too many pages. Look at me. Oh, yeah, a little at a time. Just, like, drag it across there. You know, it's like jogging. It's like going out jogging, and you only jog past your house where nobody sees you. <laughs> they think you're jogging, and then you start walking, and they wonder why it takes you four hours to get home, and you only went to the end of the road, you know. It's like manual dexterity. You are going to have to work at this a little at a time. So after I got the pages cut, <laughs> yeah, it's late. You Look at me. Yeah, can you just feel it like it's just like oh just pulling it across there and I'm taking out the acetate because I can use these strips for cards and different uh, ideas so now um, I'm just measuring to be sure on the acetate you want to take it down just slightly uh, less than your pages because you don't want them hanging out so I did it 8 by 10 so it's 8 inches across, 10 inches down, which was really nice. And as many as I could handle inside my Fiskar self-sharpening, yes, let me say that. I love this bad boy. I keep it on the side there uh, because it just, for big projects like this, it is wonderful. Yeah, you don't want to get this out, you know, for making a little card, but yeah. So now we'll push that aside, and I'm just finishing up 80 sheets cut it 8 by 10 and uh, this look at me <laughs> it's painful just to watch myself do this edit and uh, my Yeti mic is still in the box remember I had to take it back I haven't got it out so that's why yeah my wrist was killing me but this is what's really funny can I just say I'm rubbing my left wrist <laughs> dyslexic in some way with my muscles because I rub my left I take my watch off and rub my left wrist when I'm pushing with my right hand I don't know this is what I'm telling you about this tutorial it was one crazy thing after another as I'm watching the edit like you're watching it I'm thinking to myself what are you rubbing your left hand for like, oh, maybe it's because I was really pressing down, holding all the sheets so they wouldn't move. Okay, let's go with that. <laughs> yeah, it only makes sense, right? The reason I said about uh, the Yeti mic was that I seem to be screaming, thinking I don't have the external mic hooked into my computer, but I really don't have to. So as the tutorial goes on, I'll quiet not by promise. <laughs> yeah. I always start out everything with uh, full steam, but then, you know, my steam wears out and uh, I get down to talking at a normal level. So here I need to cut this Bristol board up. Love this uh, Bristol for painting on, for any types of projects. It's just a beautiful paper. Hello, yeah. <laughs> you knew I had to put something in my tutorial, didn't you? And why not a hello? Now, I don't want to waste um, paper. All I'm doing here is sizing it so that when I put it into the book, it's somewhat even. And you know something? <laughs> Talk about something. I always put Coca-Cola as C-O-K-E-C-O-L-A. And I just noticed that. 
again, this is the second time I noticed it's a C-O-C-A, Coca-Cola. Yeah, I can't have a tutorial without putting my Coca-Cola in there, can I? And right about now, I needed to have my Coca-Cola, trust me. <laughs> so, I have everything cut. Let's move on. And now, I'm going to grow a flower. Yes, why not? Let's get some uh, plants, plant life in this tutorial. So here, I've cut out all of this paper. I don't know what was wrong with that. Oh, I put it back. There you go. And I have all of my acetate page protectors at your stationery store. Beautiful, thick acetate for card making, for shaker cards and things. You'd, you'd love it. Once I get that all organized, so kind of in my head, I can um, figure out what I have to do next. Now, I couldn't leave the Bristol coloring card stock just plain because Jane Davenport's book is so beautifully illustrated that I had to put something on all this real estate, especially the bigger pages like this. I think it looks very nice. And then I'll just cut it down so that it does look uh, presentable inside the book. And I put these on odd pages in, into, like in between, oh, 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 excuse me, don't get on my hearts there. <laughs> there you go. You were waiting for that, weren't you? If you watch my tutorials, you know my little dog's going to walk across the screen at some point. So here I, <laughs> let's move on, right? So I, the larger sheets I use, the heart. I love this heart uh, punch. But this is thick cardstock, the Bristol. And most of the punches will go through it, but some didn't. Larger punches that you think will go through the cardstock that's, you know, really thick, they they don't. So you have to, you know, I had to go through my punches just to make sure that they would travel through the paper. And I got some really nice patterns. I didn't want to do too much. Uh, so what I did was I took some of the smaller sheets and I just did the corner punches like this on each side. And that way it didn't take away too much of the paper for practicing on, but yet added a little bit of something, something, you know. I think it's um, only fitting and you get to use your punches. I try to think, especially when I'm doing cards, uh, of using my punches because that's why we bought them, right? And I have to tell you something that's really funny as we close up this envelope and move forward. And I'm cutting this. Can you imagine? But you are going to have to cut a little bit off the corners. It does leave a tiny edge. But when I started this, all I had was the little uh, quarter inch rings. I literally, literally had to tear my craft room apart to find the one and a half inch large um, coils. I was into... <laughs> okay. Uh, when you cut your pages and you're sliding your cutter knife down, Move your um, ranger mat or whatever mat you have for your protective uh, color, you know, your coloring mat here, whatever they call this thing. And uh, otherwise, I just was slicing down and cutting it the whole time. But you know what? I needed a smaller mat, so this worked out perfect. Oh, yeah. Thumbs up. This is great. All I had to do was take it off. Look at the huge cutting mat I have on my, on my island. So anyway, yeah, I actually got this at Tuesday morning with the scallops on the side. It was a nice large sheet. Now, even cutting off that uh, third piece off of there, it's still a nice size mat. And it was really affordable at Tuesday morning. This was the punch I was talking about, the lattice one that will not go through the Bristol cardstock. That's okay. Mental note, only use on lighter poundage paper. That's fine. But look at this butterfly punch. I love this one. Sometimes we forget, you know, what punches we do have that are so pretty. It's like a die, you know? And um, this one by Martha Stewart. Every other, yeah. <laughs> I probably fell asleep there. I'm <laughs> just waking myself up. I don't know. I just want to show you how pretty this 3D punch is where you can just pinch the little butterfly wings in on every other punchline. It's so crazy pretty and it would look beautiful on a vintage card. I think I'm gonna have to use this actually. 
So I'm going to show it to you close up. You just take your nails and you pinch them in. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? Just your thumbs, press them in, and you have a little bit of, you know, 3D look inside of this magnificent book. Well, oh, good morning. <laughs> I'm back. Oh, yeah. You could tell I was wearing out there. It was after 2 o'clock in the morning, so now I'm up. It's 8 o'clock. And let's carry on. See this Martha Stewart scoreboard? I didn't know on the back of it it had the ability to make envelopes. Is that crazy or what? So I took a break from doing this tutorial. After I saw that, I was dusting off some stuff as I was looking for those coils. And I said, look at that. I've had that little Martha Stewart thing forever and didn't turn it over one time and knew it made these things, envelopes. And then I found my foam sheets, the Elmer foam sheets from Walmart that will fit inside my platform, just cutting it off. I mean, miracles do happen. I'm finding all the stuff that I was thinking I would need to go out and buy because I didn't know where I organizingly lost them. Yes, hid them. So here we go. You're going to take your book and decide where you want those acetate sheets. I want one directly on the front so it doesn't get dirty. And it gives you an opportunity, yeah, find a spot there, yeah, gives you an opportunity to see where you want to put all your real estate when you open up your book. And what do you want to trace? I want to trace that face. Then you move on. And uh, this is, I'm not going to show you all 170 or whatever pages. I decided maybe at the end I did a flick through for you. But um this just gives you an opportunity to put those pages where there aren't any faces or there aren't projects for you to trace over. And that way you can back up. And I also added some cardboard pieces, which you'll see throughout there. It gives me stability to, you know, if I'm sitting in an office or I'm somewhere and I bring my marker, you'll see what I do at the end. Uh, I found something else. <laughs> this was like a treasure hunt. Yes, doing this book was like a treasure hunt. And when I found the coils, they were on the other side of my island, organized in the doors that open up where I put them. Like I said, I'm an organized hoarder. And uh, there's all kinds of hoarders. There's scatter hoarders, you know, where you just scatter it everywhere and you're delighted to see it and you don't mind it's all over. Okay, let's move on. Okay, I had this gigantic book that I used to practice little sketches in. Uh, I bought it at Michael's and I'm trying to get the concept of those coils because I'm telling you. Um, and then I was like, wow, I can't remember drawing these. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, it was like, um, what is it? Like memory lane. I was having memory lane experiences throughout this tutorial. So there's my small coils. Oh, I, I could find those. I had them in a trunk because, you know, and as I'm looking in the trunk, I'm thinking all week long this week, I have to go out and buy myself different envelopes with different colors to match my cards. Well, not anymore. Look at this. Oh yeah. It's like, I don't know. It was just like shopping. Okay. This was just like a night of shopping last night. It was like, I don't have to get envelopes. Look at these things. And they come with matching cards that are thick. And these were at Michael's. I think they were four for a dollar a couple of years ago. And I just put them away again. <laughs> Organized order. Oh, yes. And then uh, in that trunk where I had these small ones, where I knew the small ones were, I had those. <laughs> that much ring. That's the size I want. But I only had about five inches of it. I mean, really. I'm thinking, Carol, uh, can you kind of put those two together somehow <laughs> and make one of those? Now, I just want to forewarn you, through the whole 42-minute video or however long it is, it doesn't get any better till the end. So you just fast forward. That's the beauty of YouTube. Fast forward. So let, let me say something about the cinch love it. 
My problems did not have to do with the ability of the cinch. It had to do with my ability to figure out what I was doing. And this machine is top notch for binding coils. I mean, next to a professional uh, machine. This is fabulous. You can put tons and tons of paper in here and it cuts beautifully. So what you want to do is slide the ruler to the right so it's totally in there. Put your pages, then press down. Now there's that little notch on the left hand side right there. That, that notch goes into the second hole. It just automatically does when you pull out the ruler to the furthest uh, slide method. Okay, and I'm showing you it's two. Yes, two notches, but it automatically goes into two. Make sure you put that in because it does stabilize this cardstock for you and nothing will slide, especially because I have acetate, yes. And then I'm pulling out number eight. If you're going to do this book with, along with me, if you have this gorgeous book, you pull out eight. You want to pull out whatever notch you don't want that hole because you don't want a half hole on the end there. I don't even know, I can't remember right now whether I did have any, but you want to just watch where they are and just like that. I mean, this is gorgeous and I love the fact that it's round holes. It's not those little square holes like um, another machine makes. I like this machine. I pull out number eight on this one as well and this is a thick, thick cardboard that I found in one of my trunks. It's actually um, a package of envelope, or excuse me, it's a package of album uh, covers that I had, and it's very, very thick, but this, this thing cut through like butter. I mean, nothing. It was just wonderful, especially on my wrist, especially my left wrist. <laughs> I'm going to baby that one. So now I had to pull out number seven, because if you go across, and I'm going to show you a close-up what I'm talking about later. Here, because it has all the little edges, I'm just making sure it's straight and look at that right to the end. It was lovely. But you do have to cut those little corners off because this is exactly the size, I did anyway, it's the perfect size for the holes that I had and you don't want any edges on it to stop it on the end. It'll make sense when I put it together. So here I'm putting that tab down the second hole, but it goes to the second hole. Don't even worry. When that slider ruler is out fully, the second hole is just right there. Slide that thing down, pull out the tab, uh, that round hole, that round thing that makes the holes uh, punch down. Pull it out so it doesn't punch and you're in. I was able to fly through this quite quickly because I got the knack of just putting down that left hand knob and making sure it made my pages steady. This machine for binding is top notch. I give it a 10 thumbs up. If I had 10 thumbs, yes. An eight finger, two thumbs up on this one. Now here's what I'm talking about. It gives you the center guide right there. Now I want to pull out that one right there because I do want that hole to be there. I have plenty of room on the right hand side for that. So I will just pull out the one next to it and looky looky, beautiful. And then slide your ruler back in. You get used to sliding it in, putting that knob back up. There you go, I'm just holding it down, looking at it to see, okay, there's the center. Obviously, I don't want that one. That's a no-no, because -no, that'll make a half hole and don't pull that one out push it back in and go to that one yes let me just see here press that down and there you have it perfect perfect placement you can't get a better machine i don't think i think this is number one for book binding with coils now i'm going to go across and do all the larger real estate um bristol cardstock and uh I really was flying through this. This is a magnificent machine. The error was in my thought process of doing the actual pages. I couldn't grab the concept, and I'll share that with you too in a minute. <laughs> We're going to do a lot of sharing through this tutorial if you stick with me. Once I found my beautiful big coils on the opposite side of my, right where I'm working, oh, I must have seen these coils 10 times last week. When I was looking for other products, they were there. I kept moving them 
and anyway I got to clean out some areas of my craft room last night that I hadn't got around to plus um, you know I found a lot of products so that was great shopping so here you, these uh, rings fit in a groove the large size the side that goes up and around up and around those fit perfectly they snap in actually and then the smaller loop that's where you're going to put your um, pages now here's where the total mistake happened I was watching tutorials that told me to put the top page up and the bot there it is see what I mean the large ones fit right down and there's a little clip they clip in they don't move it's perfect then the smaller loops are what you put your pages in. Now, what I kept doing on here was putting the pages in the wrong order. And I don't mean like one, seven, nine, eight, no. I was putting the, um, the cover in the wrong spot and the back side because you're supposed to put, if it, okay, if I was to do this right, I would put the last page first. And then I'd build my way up to page number one. I would put the top facing uh, my front page on, facing me, and the bottom page flipped over so that the images were kissing one another, and then put it together and bind. Hi, oh yes, you're such a friend. <laughs> yeah, um, he's my craft friend. Um, so then you put it in and here's the, what I didn't get at the beginning too that I guess I must have skipped this when I was watching YouTube videos. You have to put those ring openings butt up against the cinch. So each end is up against the cinch and the round part's looking towards you. So because I wrecked that one by pressing it down improperly, I had to go back to looking at the book. <laughs> This book became my best friend. I was feeling pretty coil challenged by now. I just didn't get it. I didn't get how I could put the pages in the way I thought the order should be and it not turn out right. And if you don't understand the coil process right here, um, it can get challenging. And I'm not making an excuse for my ignorance here, but it's so true because... Uh, it wasn't until the final part where it clicked in that I had to start the pages with the last page and with the first number one page, then put my front page looking up at me, then my back page face down. Oh, hello, hello, yes, how are you doing? So then I started watching a tutorial. <laughs> the best tutorial on this is Heidi Swap's tutorial on the cinch. I'm going to leave it in the description box because it is the best one I found the easiest. I found it at the end. So it ended up, get it, and ended up being perfect. So here I'm just going around, going around thinking, okay, why is my last page first and my front page upside down? <laughs> yeah, look, and I've got these page, what are these pages doing here? I don't want them on the back. There's my front page, yes. But as soon as I flick that over, they came out because the other, the rings aren't on proper, like the rings are proper, but my pages are wrong. Let me go there. So I nicely start taking them apart until I can't take it anymore. Yes, it's called a uh, coil, um... Uh, I don't know what you call this madness coil madness I just and you don't want to rip any of those things but look at <laughs> I said I don't care I've got about six sets of six three sets of these and sets of two so I had six rings that I could work through okay and I had to take apart five of them yes it was the fifth one actually four of them the fifth one I got it down but look at this. Oh, yeah. Are you going to use that again? Do you think I could put that back together? <laughs> yeah. A slinky, a slinky, a wonderful, wonderful toy. That's what I kept thinking of. I've wrecked my slinky. Look at that. <laughs> so I begin again. 
chapter, who knows what chapter I'm on here. Um, this was yesterday, and it was the day before and yesterday, right? Because now I'm on my third day, my second day of edit. I'm so confused. You've got to be really confused. <laughs> So what do I do here? I thought I'm going to change this up. I put the pages in upside down. Okay. It can't get any better than this. Like, I don't know. I'm thinking to myself, okay, let's go like this. Um, no, this wasn't the upside down page. Excuse me. This was the exact same way I did it before. Not thinking to put my last page first and my first page will land at the top. And you have to be careful that all of them. So I think I grasped that. I grasped something here. I don't know what it was. I thought, okay, maybe I have to do it this way. Okay, look at me. This is like, so painful. Yeah, so <laughs> I skipped a whole bunch. Here I go again. Oh, yeah, it's coil removal madness. <laughs> I was thinking, okay, I'll do it much neater. It doesn't matter. Once you take them out, look at it's twisting. Come on, get together. Come on. Yeah, it's just you don't care by, you know, 2 o'clock in the morning. Look at me. I don't even care. Okay, I saved this much, and I'll work with the back page separately. Now, everything's okay. You know, I don't want to do anything. Take your time, Carol. And, um, yeah, this wasn't going to work either. So this is coil number two. I hope there's a sale on these size coils the next time at my, I'm at Michael's. <laughs> so I'm going to have to get me a whole lot of them. Well, I decided not to take you through the whole turmoil of coil. Um, yeah, madness. Look at that thing. Yeah, there isn't even anything I can use that for. You know, unless I chopped it up made earrings. I don't know. <laughs> I wonder if my grandchildren would realize what they were, you know, if I made earrings out of them. But this is the, let me see, one, two, three, four. I think this is the fifth coil I go through, and it worked. I, But you know what I did? As you can see here, I'm just, I put my back page on the back. I put my front page on the front. No flippy flippy. Um, and then I pressed it down properly with the, twisty dial thing on the top look it so beautiful but what happened was yes there is a uh, funny thing here I one of them slid out and so I had to take it apart but I nicely took it apart and then I looked at the other one and yeah when you see that face I drew years ago you'll know why I bought this book <laughs> yeah so <laughs> Isn't that funny? Yeah, I don't know why I kept that in the edit. But anyway, if I kept all this in the edit, that's not going to matter, right? So here, I had to put the little piece that got left out. Like, you know, I had to take it out really nice. I was gentle and kind. And then I slid them back in properly like that because I already had them. Now, I sped this up quite a bit. I did it so gentle. And then it worked. Yes, my front page is on the front, my back page is on the back. It worked out perfect. I don't even know how I did it to explain it to you. But uh, yeah, see that was out. I forgot to, uh, I had to take it apart so I could put that acetate on the front because I didn't want it to get messy. And I could actually practice that front cover face there. And as you saw in the book, I need as much face practice as I can get now. As I was looking for stuff, I found this clear, zipped up pencil case. Perfect. The whole placement was perfect. It was a little long on each side, you know, maybe an uh, eighth of an inch. That was great. I put uh, Jane's markers in there, some uh, alcohol wipes I get from the dollar store, a package of 100 for a dollar fifty, because you know everything at my dollar store is not a dollar. I found this tag, so I thought I'd, I'll take Jane's markers and I'll put have fun in some little brush lettering. And it's the faux brush lettering, which is nice. And I did. I started with the white on the black. And here I'm just going over because you want to thicken up your downstrokes, right? And leave your upstrokes fine. 
And then I took this beautiful turquoise one. I love this, it's so juicy. And I thickened up my down strokes with this, as you can see. And I am gonna have fun in this book. I really am. I mean, uh, I hope you'll give it a try. It doesn't have to be this book, but on all your acetate sheets, you are going to be able to practice. I'm gonna show you that. And I wanted to remind myself to just keep having fun. That's what it's all about. And that's why I could persevere through this. Isn't this awesome? So I put my little ruler in there. And um, yeah, I'm going to add her ink pen and the alcohol wipes in there later. And then I thought I'd save you me having to unclip it to put that uh, back in there. <laughs> And I took my uh, tape runner, and I'm just going to put it on the opposite side here. Have fun. Once I get this in place, I am going to do a flip through, I think. I'm not sure. This is just my stray markers that I keep in this little jar. And um, I like to keep all of my markers out so I can see them. And look at this glove. I don't know what it, where I got these cotton gloves. Um, I got... a bunch of them and so I put one in the pencil case because it's nice for wiping down if you have the alcohol uh, little sheets you know they're wet this way if you're sitting somewhere you're not at home you just take your little glove out your cotton glove and wipe it clean so here I took a watercolor brush and look at that I'm just showing you now I took a thicker one and uh, I have colored brushes that are erasable so I'm going to put those in the pencil case and I'm going to be able to replicate this. You can um, put, I don't know, whatever mediums you have that are erasable. There's the ink pen. And those sheets also, the small ones, I'm using to put notes on. So when I get to a certain place and there's something I want, there's the alcohol wipe. It comes right off. Get my nice cotton glove in a second. That's the sec, yeah, that's the alcohol wipe. My glove is on, and look at that, nice and clean. Have fun. And I'm doing a quick flick through, and here, I'm just going to show you. I found these <laughs> on my treasure hunt. I remember I bought those at Michael's. All you do is take the bottom off and stamp. Yeah, look at that. This is my story, I think it says. And uh, they have all kinds of sayings on them, and they were like next to nothing. I think they were $3. So, um, yeah, have fun. I thought, I'm going to keep these out because they have all different sayings for journaling. And I thought that would be fun. So if I have any notes up until then, yeah, I'm just, it got a little uh, bit of ink there. And I wanted to sop it up with my paper towel. But there you have it, my friends. I hope you were encouraged in some way through this tutorial to uh, take, if you have a journal, if you have this book, you can practice on it, just like your Etch-A-Sketch in days gone by. One acetate sheet you need per side. You just flick it over and you can uh, practice on the other side. And you can get uh, erasable markers that are thick. I have them in all sizes. I have colored erasable markers. You can get the Sharpie colored erasable markers would be wonderful on here because you could practice coloring it in and learning how to do your shading and all kinds of possibilities. So thank you very much for going through this tutorial. Thank you to my subscribers and those that are new that have subscribed. I sure appreciate it. You know your comments mean the world to me. And uh, yeah, I didn't even put my glove on that time. <laughs> it must be, oh, just wipe it off. You know, you go. I was able to get 10 hours of footage down to 40 minutes for you. I know that's kind of long, but if you stuck with me, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial in some way. You learned something. You could do this with any books and get your practice time in there. Acetate is the best way to take a marker and be able to erase it so that, you know, like I say all the time, repetition is the key to learning. And sticking with a project like this, like I did, is worth it in the long run. I added some lips on a clothes peg, of course, to end this tutorial. No, no, don't worry. I'm not taking these off. I'm just twisting them around. Yeah, I so enjoyed doing this for you. I'm so thankful that this came to my mind, you know, to do this. Because I know 
that working on acetate and being able to erase is fun to do. So have yourself a blessed week. I shall see you on the next tutorial, of course. Thank you for subscribing to my channel. And thank you so much for your comments. They mean a lot. Take care, everybody.